Hello, my name is Tori. Hi, my name is Eric. Hi, my name is Joel. And we're the three-member team from Northwest Iowa Community College. And we are going to be going over the ethanol industry. We are also going to demonstrate how to use the fluke equipment on the systems commonly found in the ethanol industry. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the card itself and make sure there's that voltage is coming in there and that we're not, that the card isn't mal malfunctioning itself. So I'm just going to use the fluke process meter and I'm going to test a known voltage, go check my input, and then te test the known voltage again to make sure the meter is working properly throughout the measurement. I'll check my known source of 24 volts and it's reading properly at 23.6. I'll go to the input card and we're not receiving any voltage at the input card. and the meter is still functioning properly. So what we're going to do next is go to the overload contacts on the motor starter itself and test them. And what I'm going to do first is just do a visual inspection of the starter. And just looking at it, I can see that across phase two, the overload relay has tripped. So what I should read at my overload contacts, which are going to the input card, I should read 24 volts because they're open. And if I read zero volts, they would be closed and we should have been receiving that signal to the input card. But as I go to the contacts, they are reading my 24 volt signal. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and reset them and read them again to make sure they're working properly. Now that the contacts are closed, they should read zero volts. Now our overload contacts are working properly. So now, and we know we lost the phase to the overload, so now we have to go and see why the overload's tripped. The next step in this troubleshooting process is to measure the current flow. I'm going to be making the current measurement with the Fluke current meter. So to set it up, I'm just going to turn it on here and then make the connection with our smartphone device. And I have picked up the meter and as we can see, they are reading the same numbers. So I'll be able to see whatever he sees and what the measurements are. So then I'll get ready to make some measurements. And what we're going to do first, we're going to go across the first phase of the motor and we're going to go sequentially, one, two, three, and make sure everything's working. Okay. You can energize the motor when you're ready. What we saw was that the motor through phase one was actually drawing 150% of the FLA or full load amps, which is a problem because you only, you want it to just draw the full load amps and not too much more. We're going to check the second phase. Go ahead and energize the motor when you're ready. And we didn't read any current across that one. So we're going to go ahead and check the third one. Energize the motor. And again across the third phase we read 150% of full load amps. So what that tells us is that we've lost a phase. So we're going to have to take a couple more measurements to see why that's happening. Our next step in the troubleshooting process is to verify incoming power and that our fuses are good. And we're mostly concerned with L2. So I've already made the electrical connections after following our lockout tagout procedure. I've verified that our meter is working and we're synced up to our smartphone. So all that's left to do is to energize the motor. And we see that we are reading the appropriate 240 volts. Next step is to verify the output of the starter to make sure the load contacts are working. So I've already made my electrical connections and we synced up to the smartphone. So all that's left to do is to energize the motor starter. And start the motor. And we're getting the appropriate 240 volts. So now we're going to check our power going into the motor. And I've already made my electrical connections. And we followed lockout tagout procedure. So I'm going to energize the motor. And I'm going to start the motor. And the motor is only reading 160 volts, which leads us to know that we have an open conductor on the L2 line. 
So we know we have power coming out of the starter, but it's not making it to the motor. And the only thing in between those two things is a junction box. So we're going to go ahead and check that. So I've locked out all the power already, so I'm going to open the enclosure. What it looks like is that we had a loose connection on this terminal strip, which caused the conductor to burn up and create an open. So we're going to go ahead and replace this terminal block and put it back into service. Today we're going to be measuring the voltage across the three-phase motor starter with a fluke insulation multimeter. I'm Taylor Cruz and I will be using the Fluke Connect feature to connect to the smartphone and then I will be storing it on the Fluke database because we only have one PPE suit so it's only safe for Travis to go in the booth. Now we're going to set up the meter to connect to the phone so we can record the measurements. I'm going to set the multimeter to volts AC and press the save so it connects to Taylor's phone. Now that it has come up, all you have to do is click on it and the two will sync with each other. Now we're going to take a 10 second recording of the current that is flowing through each phase of the motor using this meter so we'll disconnect from that one and now connect the fluke to this, uh, connect to this one. I'll start my recording and then we'll turn the motor on and monitor it for 10 seconds to see if there's any rough spots which would cause a spike in current and make a changing value. Now that it is shut off, we'll save this again to a design folder under the north diverter gate for line one current. And now Travis will move it and we can do the line two current to monitor that also. Now that he has that set up, I will start my recording again, turn the motor on, monitor it for 10 seconds so we can get a good graph. Now that it is shut off, I'll save that again and Travis will move it to line three. We'll repeat the process one last time. And I'll save this last one in the line three current file. My name is River, and we're now going to measure the resistance across the load contacts. Now that the circuit has been locked out, tagged out, we now take the three step approach by measuring a known source, measuring the contacts again to make sure there's no power, and going back to the known source. Well, what we're actually measuring here is the load contacts. Here you can see where L1, L2, and L3 make their connections. He's going to measure across the load contacts now. We're going to use the Flute Connect equipment. I will be capturing the information on my phone while he is actually taking the measurements. Captured. Go ahead and move to L2. Captured. Now go ahead and move to L1. Captured. Now we have all the resistance across the load contacts on our database. Part of the PM that we were assigned to do on our Fluke app was to do a vibration analysis on the motor. We're going to accomplish that by using the Fluke 805 SC, which is the vibration meter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Blake start the motor. I'm going to press the measurement button and then I'm going to hold the meter to the motor keeping it at a 90 degrees from the bearing. The meter took the readings, the light on the bottom of the meter turned green and then it displayed the reading. And now with that information you can click, click save, send it to the phone and we can do an analysis on our uh, later recordings. The PM on this motor on the north diverter gate tells us that we need to do an 8 hour temperature analysis. I'm going to be doing the temperature analysis with the Fluke T3000FC. Uh, I'll go through the, the procedure of hooking it up. The probe is already connected to the north diverter gate motor and we hook up the probe. It does have a negative and positive polarity on the plug-in. What we're going to do is we're going to set this up to log for eight hours and this motor is going to run uh, not continuously but it will come on, kick off, come on, kick off as needed during its operation during the eight hours.
It's been eight hours now that the motor's been running or in operation. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pair the device by pushing the fluke send button. And what that will do is it will soon send the info over to the paired device. Here is a trend graph. And as you can see throughout the eight hours, the motor did get significantly hotter throughout the day. What we checked was the voltage coming into the motor starter. We checked the current coming out. We also checked the resistance values across the load contacts. Um, we checked the vibration at the motor. Um, we also did an eight hour temperature test on that same motor and we magged it out to see how the, resist the resistances and the windings were and we did thermal imaging on some of the boxes around the area. Uh, in conclusion, we need to change the line two load contacts on the starter, but we'll just be changing all six instead. And also, the motor windings uh, had changed in resistance value from our last preventative maintenance, and it had a higher vibration. So we'll be consulting with some experts and other technicians to see what we need to do to solve it. The plan was to use the fluke equipment to calibrate instruments, troubleshoot the process, and also document the process. Due to the length of the video, we have decided to remove some of the distillation material. But we hope you enjoyed this video. And see you in Seattle.